Welcome to The Wellness Way with me, Philly J. Lay, a lay person's guide to your natural health systems, your very own NHS. Hello, lovely people, and welcome to the last episode of The Wellness Way for 2023. Wow, where has this year gone? It's just gone in a flash but it has been truly extraordinary for me. I want to thank every single one of you for being here. And I'm just gonna say, I've got a new catchphrase. If you like my vibe, please subscribe. <laughs> yes, it makes such a huge difference if you subscribe to the podcast. It really helps push the algorithm and get this information out. If you're watching this, you can see I am still dressed in Christmas attire because there were 12 days of Christmas, and I want to celebrate every single one of those. Talking about celebrating, December the 21st, the winter solstice, was actually the third anniversary of the publication of my first book, The Natural Wellness Journal. Gosh, where is that three years gone? And to celebrate that publication, I have actually put up my next book as a pre-order on my webpage, phillyjlay.com, and it's called The Wellness Way your natural health systems. We all have them, but we just haven't been taught how to use them. For many, including myself, it was very overwhelming learning all of this information. And the reason I wrote that book and my new book, and I started the podcast, was I wanted to share everything that I had learned on my journey. I have broken it down into really simple steps, a beginner's guide, and also use the resources of my fabulous guests on this podcast with links to all the episodes related to the topics that I'm talking about. We'll talk about germ versus terrain theory and all the wonderful things that you can do for your terrain, which has been very overlooked in the science of modern medicine. And we will look at the alternatives that you can use to help your health. We'll be looking at Ayurveda and all the fantastic modalities that that gave us, the great grandmother of modern medicine. And you can check out so many of my podcasts this year on Ayurveda. I've got Sebastian Cole, Viv Clifton, and the wonderful Joe Weber and Marion and Katie from Pucker. Lots of fantastic knowledge that we've got out to you this year. And I've chosen to write this book as an ebook so that you can click on the links and go straight through to the podcast of all my completely phenomenal guests. We'll learn about energy. And I interview so many energy practitioners from EFT to Paul Codenan from Positive Life to... Oh, Dr. Bruce Lipton. Four years ago, I would never have dreamed that I would interview some of my complete and utter health heroes like Dr. Bruce Lipton, like Zach Bush, and of course, Barbara O'Neill, who is coming up shortly in the new year. But I have, and it's been an extraordinary experience. And I really am a shit hot manifester. And you can learn to do that too. All you have to do is follow the steps in my book. And to celebrate the release of it, I have got a fantastic competition going on until the last day of Christmas, January the 6th. All you have to do is head over to my webpage, phillyjlay.com, and you'll find a pre-order button. So pre-order a copy of The Wellness Way, Your Natural Health Systems, and you will be automatically entered into a draw to win not just another copy of that book and a signed copy of The Natural Wellness Journal, but also a signed copy of the amazing Barbara O'Neill's book, Self Heal by Design. Yep, you're going to get all three books, two of them signed. And I really look forward to you entering that competition because between these books, you've got just about everything you need to know to start healing yourself. Sorry to interrupt this podcast. Why don't you come and sign up to my newsletter at phillyjlay.com where we can keep connected and we can talk about lots of things going on in the world. You will also get my free manifestation meditation so you can become a shit hot manifester too. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and turn your notifications on so you never miss an episode. Thank you. But before we leave 2020, I just want to remind you of some of my guests that I've had on the podcast over the last year. We have laughed, we have cried, especially with Callie Blackwell, the hope dealer, when she spoke about helping her son, Darren, heal from terminal cancer. 
I've had help from some wonderful people over the loss of Mr. Rupert Bear, my beautiful little dog and partner. And I just want to say a big thank you to Sharon Smith and Janice Thompson for hopping on and helping me cope with that. And those podcasts, if you're dealing with grief at the moment, are absolutely crucial to your journey. So much information. But most of all, I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart you for being here. Bless you. As I said, please share. Let's keep getting this information out. And join me next week as we take another deep dive into detox, one of my favorite subjects and absolutely crucial in the world that we live in. And I'm going to share with you some of the products and some of the resources that I use to detox, especially heavy metals, out of my body. So I hope you'll come and join me then. But for now, here are some of the highlights of 2023. Happy 2024. And I'll see you next year. And remember, the doctor of your future is you. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you, Philly, and all of you in the audience. So glad to be with each of you. It's a blessing to be having a human moment together. Well, fluoride was actually used in World War II in the concentration camps. It was used to suppress people to keep them down so you know it, it worries me greatly that this is still put in our water anywhere in the world really fluoride in excess is very harmful and is known to be a neurotoxin and lower the iq especially of children who are exposed to high dose of fluoride and unfortunately when it's in the water you tend to absorb it a little bit faster than the fluoride trace small minuscule amounts of fluoride that's in some of the soil and the food products so I'll be, although we do need a little bit of fluoride, we're getting way too much either at the dentist or in our drinking water for what we really need. So tell me, what is the difference between doing ayahuasca and doing mushrooms? You know, everybody's talking about microdosing at the moment. So what is the difference between a mushroom ceremony? Well, a mushroom ceremony, I've only done um, two. And I think you're always called to a plant. So I was more called to ayahuasca. So the mushroom, I believe, is a masculine plant. So the mushroom is a beautiful, it will show you what you need to be shown. However, it's a very direct, it's very masculine and it goes boom. You can't run from the, what the mushroom's telling you. You can't, you can't, the mushroom's very direct, very masculine, very there in your face. And if you're with a good healer and good practitioner, they'll guide you to go through that space but you can't run from the mushroom, it's masculine. It's very beautiful. Ayahuasca is a feminine and they call her she, and she's more feminine, she flows. She, you know, she takes you on a journey, but you can dip, you can go round it. You, you sometimes don't have to go and face what she's showing you. Whereas it's just the feminine and the masculine and they're both beautiful plants, but they've got different energies. One of my favorite tips from Ayurveda from, from winter health is actually it's a good time to have sex. Um, <laughs> the ancient texts recommend the physical expression of love between couples is better done in the winter than the summer because sex is seen as quite a depleting heating activity. And if it is if you think about all the things that are, that are happening and the, the juices... So I love the idea after your lovely roast and maybe a glass of mulled wine and a, you've had a hundred steps is that you cosy up and and have some intimacy. Well, we are energy and we're giving off energy the whole time and uh, and it was it was magic because everybody that was there, uh, I think there were two protesters rocked up. Was there? Um, okay. A, apparently, but um, so somebody told me. But you know, everybody that that is there we all want to learn and I think this is a, a really crucial moment in history and people have had enough they've discovered the lies and even if you don't want to wake up to the lies yet because it is a really big ask to to say to somebody do you know everything you've been told is just rubbish I know yeah um and you have to question all of those times that you went to a doctor as a child, all the time your mum said, you know, just take this medicine, you're going to be okay. Uh, you know, everything that you learnt at school. And I don't know what I call God. I mean, I call God the universe. And some people, you know, Barbara is obviously very religious and you come from a very religious background and we will get on to that. But, you know, some people call it source, some people call it the field, universe, you know, whatever you want to call it. But once you learn to connect with it, 
it is magical, just magical. And it answers. And the vibration that you put out is the vibration that you get back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've interviewed some massive names. I'm lucky enough to have interviewed some massive names. And, you know, you said, I, I don't have the fear to ask them. Did you ever have the fear to ask them when you started? Not really, no, because I, it, it's part of the Irish culture that, you know, you don't, you, we ask, you know, we're kind of, we're, we have what we call neck, you know, do you use that expression in the UK? No. We have neck, you know, we just, we'll, we'll go for it, you know, and see what happens, you know. I mean, I had fears about whether, I said this to you earlier, whether I could actually ask the right questions. And I managed to let go of that because I felt that was just my ego kind of making it about me. Do you know what I mean? It's not about you, really. It's just about the wisdom. You know, now when I when I see Barbara go on stage and I, you know, I've... I'm organizing this. I don't have any sense of ownership of it. I just feel like, wow, you know, what a privilege to do this, you know? But not everybody has, have, wants to put in the effort. Everybody, let's say, is lazy, right? Or people are too busy. They don't have time to, to do all these habits. Um, so what do you do? Well, why don't you just use a technology that can just give it to you, just does it for you. And we do it with frequency. I mean, just think about it. Even now, scientists are, are finding more and more every day how much that we are not just physical matter, we're actually just energy. But I did something really funny with my lady care. And the first day I had it, I was so excited. And I realized that I could stick to radiators. Okay. And so I was just having a ball with, with my <laughs> magnet. And then my youngest daughter brought her boyfriend over for the first time for me to meet him and I cooked him a meal uh, and I welcomed him in the door and I put the plates on the table and I just got the knives and forks out and I put my knife and fork down and then I leant across to put his knife and fork down and my knife and fork flew onto my... <laughs> I was like, oh sorry, what was he thinking? <laughs> I've got my lady care and then I showed him that all the knives and forks would stick to my, my badge uh, and then I proceeded to go and show him how I could stick to a radiator. <laughs> Well done. Um, but my lady care got rid of my hot flushes beautifully. Well, I mean, a few years ago, I would have um, said, I've always been um, more holistic. So I never went on the contraceptive pill. We've got lots of evidence that turmeric from traditional understanding is, is really good for digestion and, uh, and um, the liver. Um, but lots of the modern clinical evidence for it comes from uh, its effect in, in inflammation and, and things like osteoarthritis, where there's actually really quite good clinical evidence for it. Um, however, when you look into the mechanics of it, um, it's not very bioavailable. So the, the active ingredients in turmeric don't get absorbed into the body. Um, so I guess the, the question then is, how, how is it actually having its effect? And I think some of the, the sort of the more that people look into the science behind some of these herbs, the more we can actually work out how things are working. So perhaps turmeric is having lots of its effects on, on directly on the gut and that actually doesn't need to get into the body to have its beneficial effect. We know that lots of um, herbs and foods are going to have a health benefit through interacting with the gut microbes. So, so working directly with the, all the healthy bacteria that we have in our guts that um, that contribute positively to our overall well-being. I think, I think what's interesting is, is taking this pharmaceutical approach to using herbal medicine, which we've just been talking about, such as taking high doses of curcumin extract. You do remove one of the beauties of herbal medicine, which is when a plant contains 300 or so compounds like turmeric, um, there's a buffer and a synergy effect um, that we don't quite understand yet. So compounds are working to synergistically enhance some aspects, and buffer some potential side effects because herbs can have side effects just like Western medications can have side effects. Um, but they tend to have fewer because of this um, buffering effect. And we don't really understand it all, but all the traditional wisdom systems used whole herbs. They may have combined them with fat sometimes to enhance absorption or a little bit of black pepper, which contains piperine to enhance absorption, but they definitely didn't take out the compounds but I do have a sympathy with the research industry trying to show how these herbs work. It's much easier to pick out one of the main active compounds um, and give someone a high dose of that and show it's doing something. But it, it does go against all the principles of, of traditional healing, which is to use the whole spectrum herb. So I'm going to tell you a funny story now. When I was um, really ill and I couldn't get out of bed for two years after my spinal fusion, I 
read about turmeric and I thought, right, I'm going to um, hit the turmeric hard and see if I can get the information down and stop this pain in my back. And I was trying to get off the opioids for stopping the pain. It is my first anniversary. Yes, it is one year ago since I started this podcast. And it was actually my first shot at using technology too. But I did it. And I've never really known what I wanted to be when I grew up. Uh, and I found it. I found my purpose and I feel like I've come home. I'm going to be working on a lot of new things over the next year. I'm going to start doing in-person podcasts, which absolutely terrifies me. And I just want to have the connection with some of my guests. And I'm going to put a few of my favorite recipes in there that I can't live without, like my bone broth. I'm also going to start blogging. And I'm also going to start putting my podcasts up on my webpage. Quantum physics is the way forward, isn't it? I mean, quantum is what is going to take us uh, into the new realm. Uh, and I know a lot of people want to go back to the old normal. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Are you? Do you ever wish for the old days back pre-COVID? No, we can't go back. We can only go forward. <laughs>